Hi everyone, my name is Georgie and I'm a senior motion designer based in London. I specialise in kinetic typography, so today I want to share with you three different techniques on how to animate between font weights, just like this. Cool, so we'll jump straight in and I'll show you how to do it. The first one I'm going to be showing you is the easiest one and it has quite a unique look to it. So it's a bit more um, stuttery and it will suit a certain type of animation that you'll be looking for. For this first technique, um, I'm going to write out the words I want, which is font weight. I want to highlight all of those um, because I want the thinnest weight first. And then I'm going to add a keyframe to the source text. So I'm going to just put the arrow down on the layer and then on text and put a keyframe for source text. Now, if I go uh, two frames along in the timeline, I can do this by holding down command and pressing the arrow button on the right. Um, and then I just need to go to my drop down menu for my character and go to the next weight, which is light. And I do this again and again and again until I've gone through all the different weights of the font. That's why you really need a font that has many different weights to it. As you can see here, it goes to the end weight and finishes, but we want it to loop around back around and be a continue, continuous animation. So I go along the timeline two frames, so each interval between each keyframe is two frames, and that makes it smooth enough, but it's still a little bit jittery. So I've copied those keyframes, I've pasted them, right click on the highlighted keyframes that I've pasted, and then go to keyframe assistant and then time reverse keyframes. And now we loop from the lightweight up to the black weight and then back down to the lightweight again. And if you wanna continue that animation in your timeline, all you need to do is copy those keyframes and paste them for as long as you need it. So we can go like this. And there we have it. We've animated between the lightweight to the, to the dark weight. But as I mentioned before, it's quite a specific look and feel to this kind of animation. But say we want it to be really smooth between the different weights. This next technique um, is a lot more time consuming, but it gets a lot smoother results. And it's the technique that a lot of people that I know would, would use. So if we jump into the next technique, and I'm gonna write the same thing again. Now I want two different layers here. So if I move this to the center of my composition and I duplicate this layer by pressing Command D and I go to my character again and I put it on thin. Um, as you can see that they don't quite line up below each other. So I'm actually gonna add a bit of tracking into the thinner font to match the thicker font. Now what I wanna do is I wanna turn this one so I can rename this layer to thick and rename this one to thin. Now I wanna create shapes from these layers. So if I right click on it and I press create, create shapes from text, and I do this for the thick layer as well. Now what I wanna do is I wanna create an animation from this thin font to this thick one. So what I need to do is find the keyframes for each letter, which has now been turned into shapes. The easiest way to show all of the paths for this layer is by double clicking U and that brings up all the elements within that, that layer that is, that is in use. So if I go to the start of this layer and I just create keyframes for every path used and then I want to do the same for the thick font. I'm going to move my playhead along in the timeline to say second because that's where I want the thick font to come in and then I'm going to go back to the start because this is where I want the thin font to come in and I need to copy these keyframes over to the um, the thick font layer so if I, if I highlight this F on the thin thin layer and I copy that and I go down the bottom of my timeline to this F and I click the path and I press paste now we, you can see that it animates from this path to this path. So we wanna copy that for each letter. So if we go up, we can copy, because the O's got the outer shape and the inner shape, we can copy both of those. We can go down to this layer and we can highlight both of those. And then we just keep doing it for each letter. Huh. 
Cool, so once that's done, we can close down this thin layer and then I can show you the animation between the, the two fonts. Now in order to speed this up, if I press U twice, it will come up with the um, all the keyframes in the layer and we can reduce this so we can put that there and then let's highlight all of those first keyframes. Uh, press Command C, then Command V to copy and paste them so that animation can go between the two. And again, if we highlight them and we go to our graph, we can then start adding some nice animation, easing in and out on those keyframes. So as you can see here, the graph is easing in and easing out between those keyframes. And I've got my graph on the speed editor. You can do it on the value editor. It's just what I prefer to use. And you can see already that that's a much nicer animation than the first technique that I showed you. It's a lot smoother. With pass, you can't actually uh, add a loop expression to it. So you'd need to copy all of these keyframes and paste them if you wanted to continue that throughout the timeline. And you can play around with the graph to create different um, animations. So the third technique is slightly different to both of those two because I'm going to introduce the use of an expression. Now, as mentioned before, I'm going to put this expression in the description below um, just so that you have it. I will begin by putting the uh, letters in, so font weight. Um, so it's, I happen to have the thin one on here, but actually it doesn't matter too much which one you start with because you're putting that into the expression. And before I put the expression in, I'm gonna add a null object, which is actually gonna be my slider control. So I'm gonna rename this slider control. And then I'm gonna go into my effects and I'm gonna type in slider to add a slider control. Um, and then I'm gonna name this font weight. So if I go back down to my uh, text layer and then I hold down Alt and I click on the stopwatch next to source text, this comes up with um, the expression code. So in here, I can write my expression on how to animate between the different front weights of this font. So for this technique, you also would really want to have a font that has loads of different weights. The second technique is the only one that you don't really need loads of different weights in order to get a good result. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna be telling this layer where to get the different font weights from. So I'm gonna create an array. So I'm typing bar array equals, So in between here, I'm going to put the, the name of the font and the weight. So I'm going to put made outer sans thin. So as you can see here, I've put the exact name of the font with no spaces, which is here this here, including capital letters and everything. And then I've just put what weight it is. So that is in um, a quotation mark. So I'm gonna go to the next line and I'm gonna copy that. But at the end, I'm gonna change that to the next weight, which is light. And I'm just gonna keep doing that until I've got all of the weights in there. Cool, so once I have that in there, I'm gonna say how to control this array, essentially. I want to do r equals math.round. And then inside these, I'm gonna pick whip to this slider. So there, it's already put in that code for me. So it's essentially saying connect this layer and this array to this slider but do it rounding up so there won't be any decimal points after i want to add an extra bracket there a semicolon and then star dot set from array oh. and then 
missed out a semicolon here. Ah, so I need to put a comma after each line to register it as different ones. And there we go. Okay, so I want to animate this from zero to five. If you include zero, then that means it's six fonts. If I was to go, let's animate this to six, it then starts to add in whatever font it wants, which it happens to be my Mirad Pro. So always do it um, from zero. And if you've got six, then make it up to five. And then you can literally animate this back down again. And we've got that same look and feel as before, except uh, we can reduce this and make it a lot smoother. And then you could loop this out. So, so I've added an expression here, which is loop out and then cycle, and then that will just keep going. And again, you can animate these with a bit of an ease in and ease out. And it means that if you do want to change this text, so I could put hello in, and it would still have that animation. I could put in my name and it would still have that animation. It takes a little bit of time to get right, but once you do, you can then copy that text uh, layer over to any composition or any file and you'll have that to use. If you've got this far and you enjoyed the video, then please hit the like button. And if you wanna see more videos from me, then hit the subscribe button. I'll be releasing a new video every week on different techniques that I've picked up over the years in the industry, all about After Effects and design. Cool, thank you, catch you on the next video, bye.